hold uh, the floor. You're asking a question. I was recognized, and I'm holding the floor. Yeah, but this 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 opportunity here rests with the chair. And I I would and I and I would request deference to the fact that I hold a chair, chair given the response, the clear interest in my question elicited a, a, a response. There is a request by uh, the chamber to, to clarify this. I think that's a reasonable request, and I'd like to ask the, for the prerogative of asking the chamber to respond. If I may, your cha Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm not going to give you that opportunity at this time. Okay. Um, in accordance to your second question, because I don't want to ignore that, I, I'm, I have not heard that this will somehow inhibit the speech of media. We are not asking people to shut down on Thanksgiving and Christmas. As I stated, there are laws in this country that still stand today, despite they could be challengeable, that require that. What we are saying is if you choose to open up on Thanksgiving and Christmas, that you have to pay premium pay, which is um, I, let, a little I different. I appreciate that. I, and uh, I've owned and operated radio stations for 30 years. Um, we, we're 365 days a year. Uh, we do not choose. Uh, it is a function of our license. It is a definition of our community service, um, number one. Uh, and by the way, California Associated Broadcasters, National Association of Broadcasters and the like have recognized, and we do as Mr. Harper has suggested, freely and of our own volition, uh, do the kinds of things to uh, encourage people to work on days that they um, might consider to be uh, onerous. The fact of the matter is in our line of work, and I would suggest in the newspaper publishing uh, operations uh, as well, um, the uh, uh, unnecessary mandate of a, uh, essentially a surcharge for doing uh, what we normally are required to do under our franchise or to publish uh, and, and distribute, I think there does run a serious risk of uh, a, essentially a financial chilling, uh, which means that the choice to work or not to work on a, a particular holiday um, would actually uh, create the real potential that instead of uh, the complement of individuals necessary on a particular day in order to cover the news and do the work that we want to do, uh, that there would be financial decisions that would be reached with respect to uh, uh, skinnying down or light lightening up the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, amount of uh, employees necessary. Um, it, it, it reminds me of the uh, case that the uh, dairy individuals uh, raised. Uh, th we have to be in business 365 days a year, and so do the newspapers, and so the other. So I, uh, I think it's a significant uh, question with respect to the unintended consequence of what you're attempting to legislate. And I will commit to you, um, as I did with my sick day legislation, that I will sit down with every industry group that wants to come in and argue. And, and there are times when um, there are arguments that we wrote into the law um, previously to accommodate uh, things that seemed unreasonable. But as it stands, we are trying to establish a minimum standard um, that affects everybody equally. The same way that we did with our tried to with sick day laws, the same way that applies to our state's uh, minimum wage laws and overtime laws. So um, I understand that every business has to adjust and, and make decisions. Um, that's part of labor laws. And unfortunately, um, if we we, we could have a disagreement about whether we let the free market just just um, act on its own, uh, but that's not the state we live in. And so I, I'd be more than happy to sit down with every industry group to specifically deal with um, their issues and see if there's a way to uh, uh, alleviate or address them. One uh, final question with respect to uh, the gentleman's uh, point here with respect to the holiday slippery slope. Um, address that. I, I, I think... Uh, uh, that question, uh, again, was one I had not contemplated in uh, the review of all of this, and, but I think it does uh, elicit some concern, and, and I'd like you to address it if you could. Well, you know, I come from a different background, I guess, than, than some of the people sitting on this panel. I'm less concerned about a holiday slip and 
slippery slope. I know that um, holiday premium pay and union contracts exist. Um, it, it extends beyond Thanksgiving and Christmas. If that's what a future body chooses to do of the California legislature, hey, I have to get this through first. What we chose were those holidays that um, have most uh, have been preserved for the longest as family holidays and have slipped into um, a, a retail and restaurant kind of extravaganza on Thanksgiving um, and slowly Christmas as well. So, you know, it may or may not become an issue, but I think we picked the two most compelling holidays of times when traditionally as a country we have slowed down and spent time with our families. Whether or not we, we uh, celebrate any religious tradition is irrelevant. Uh, we are not forcing people to serve, a, to sit down for a religious uh, experience. We are just saying that if they are taken from their families, and most of these workers, let's be honest and let's be clear, are forced, compelled threatened with firing if they do not show up on these days, that if they're compelled to do so, that they should be compensated fairly. So I am, um, I'm personally less concerned with the rest of the holidays, but I'm also not too concerned if some, somebody in the future wanted to um, address premium pay on those holidays for um, hourly employees as well. But I come from a different background. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Assemblymember Patterson. Assemblymember Lowe, I know you have a question. Yeah, I just had a, a, a few. Thank you. Well, first of all, it's quite apparent in um, Assemblymember that uh, your legislative experience is obviously passionate about working people and mm -hmm. trying to get good policies and trying to focus on those things. And uh, certainly within the legislature, you are uh, certainly fitting that mold of being the member who continues to push for that. So thank you very much for that. Um, Having said that, at the same time, um, my experience is um, I'm from Silicon Valley, as you know. My right. very first job was at the Campbell Chamber of Commerce in Silicon Valley. And much of the experience has been also trying to find uh, mutual policies in place, good public policy that addresses the same thing that we have uh, focused on, which is the, the well-being of all parties interested in looking at the unintended consequences necessarily right. of public policy. Um, so having said that, one issue that I was thinking about is the issue of Medicaid and not being able to get mm -hmm. reimbursed, for mm -hmm. example, to um, if mm -hmm. you were providing care to a patient on that holiday. Mm -hmm. well, how would we might be able to address some of those? And, and we might be able, and that's one that keeps coming back um, to me now. Uh, hospitals, of course, um, currently are open um, and, and accept uh, Medicaid. Uh, and most, but not all, do provide premium pay on those days because it's part of their overall. This is not one day in the abstract. Their budgets are built on a full years worth of, of course, um, pay and, and, um, and provisions. So it is something that we will look at and continue to work with um, the, the healthcare industry on this. In no way am I trying to penalize, like I said, my mother was a nurse. Um, some people have to work. People get sick. People die, unfortunately, on holidays. We can't stop that. Uh, that is a very different situation, I think, than um, people choosing to open up retail and restaurant establishments in order to enrich um, you know, their bottom line, which is great. You should, it's America. You should be able to do that. But we're talking about completely two different things. So we're willing to continue to work um, with hospitals, medical providers, both at home and in facilities, and see if that needs to be adjusted as well. Sure. I commit to that. Continue to work on Absolutely. addressing those issues. Yes. The other thing that um, I want to make mention is, that, as you can tell, um, I am openly Chinese. And the reason why I mention that is because um, uh, the date of. Are um, you really? <laughs> As you may be well aware of, um, the, in, in my culture in particular, right. um, um, the holidays, um, the, the culture is that such that you work very hard. Right. And again, I do have concern about some of the unintended consequences mm -hmm. and obviously understand what we're trying to address in the, in the merits and the spirit of what mm -hmm. you're trying to do, which is that of workers and if we could provide for a family and opportunities. Um, but again, I'm not might be able to further address some of those sure. challenges that exist. Really. And I'd like to work with you on that, and I've thought a lot about this, um, quite frankly. I appreciate Chinese restaurants being open on Christmas. Um, but what I have seen, and maybe this is where we go with this, and this is, like I said, a process, this first hearing in a process, um, is looking at possibly um, family-owned and operated where every but he is a family member in a business, having some sort of exemption um, related to that. So I, I am, I, I'm not there yet. I, sure. You know, we try to make sure. laws that cover everybody because if not, it, it covers nobody. Sure. Um, but I understand um, that there are uh, situations in which an entire family um, 
you know, they, they operate by different roles. My, my family's had family businesses, so, so I'm willing to, to look at that sure. as well. Yeah, and again, in my experience in coming from the region that I represent, um, the, the number of policies that we tried to put in place to address many of the inequities that exist, mm-hmm. whether it's related to housing and for employment, those type of things. But again, it is a partnership in trying to make sure that employers and employees kind of find that a good medium. And again, the spirit is, is understood and not lost on me, and I appreciate you bringing that spirit. But again, I think there are a number of issues that we can continue to try to address and I appreciate you uh, hearing from you that you are willing to address some of those sure. issues as well. Thank you. All right. Uh, it seems that we have a couple more questions here. Uh, we'll go with Council, uh, Assemblymember Chu and then with Assemblymember Harper once again. Assemblymember Chu. Thank you, Thank you very much, um, Mr. Chair, and also the Assembly Member to bring this issue to, to the committee. I'm, I'm a, an immigrant, um, came to the United States uh, as a graduate student, and I was uh, born and raised in a Buddhist family, but every year that my family uh, uh, observed the Christmas, not necessarily a religious holiday, but definitely is a, is a, is a, a holiday that uh, the family got time off and then be able to to uh, gather, you know, especially in our, in our very, very busy life. And um, I have relatives that live uh, uh, other places in the, in the United States. So um, I, I'd be very happy to uh, support uh, your, your bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Member Chu. Uh, Vice Chairman Harper. Thank you very much. A brief question and a follow-up. Um, we covered the reg- potential regulatory creep in terms of additional <laughs> holidays, uh, but that piqued my interest in uh, the other side, which is why stop at double time? Why not triple time or quadruple time? Well, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting question, but why do we mandate a minimum wage at the levels we mandated on? Why are we stopping at $10? Why not stop at $15? Um, but there, there are a number of ways of looking at that. Quite frankly, um, we went with a a level that was uh, considered decent in the um, in in the unionized world of uh, collective bargaining agreements. You know, quite frankly, if you're a construction worker, you get triple time on Labor Day. Um, I'm not asking for that, so I've chosen a number. Um, we can talk about that, but there, are, you know, overtime is time and a half is required by law. Um, we we have numbers set within our in our boundaries. So yeah, I woke up and decided double time would be fair. And Mr. Chairman, if if I could ask. Uh, to indulge the follow-up in regards to the chambers uh, being able to clarify briefly uh, the First Amendment question. Uh, Vice Chair, I've already uh, rendered my decision on that. Uh, when we take it bef- to the level, when it comes, uh, when the matters are in the hands of the committee, it's a time for members to ask questions of the author. And uh, at that time, if the author so wishes to um, provide uh, additional time to an expert witness that is speaking on behalf of the legislation proposed. At that time, we can have testimony. It is not time for rebuttal of witnesses and those that are opposed and, and, and in support. It's not the time for that. Uh, we do have the benefit of having a committee process where most bills have to stop at more than one committee. And so uh, for those uh, out, uh, outstanding questions or concerns uh, that will continue to exist beyond this committee, uh, there will be an opportunity for, if this, should this bill move forward, for those concerns to be addressed in opening, uh, ob- objecting a commentary at the, at the next committee. Uh, so nothing is preventing that. I do have the highest level of respect and admiration for the representative of the Chamber of Commerce. Ms. Pereira always holds herself to the highest level of professionalism. I just don't want to open up a Pandora's box here. It's not the practice of this committee to do that, at least not under my watch. And uh, I do want to ensure a smooth operating process here as we move forward. But I do appreciate your, your desire to get that answer. I'm confident that Ms. Pereira will provide you with her feedback as uh, we conclude and move forward beyond today. Uh, so with that, uh, Assemblywoman, I know you've said a lot, but uh, I do want to afford the opportunity to close should you desire. I just want to point out, and I didn't mean any disrespect, 
to Ms. Barrera, who I enjoy working with. But the letter from the chamber when it arrived in opposition was very clear, and the cases they cited were very clear. She brought additional cases today. I'd be more than happy to exchange legal briefs with her in the future um, over this issue and provide them to all of you. Um, clearly, First Amendment law is a moving target, but there are also clear tests provided by the Constitution, I mean by the Supreme Court, and that's what we relied upon in, in um, providing for Christmas. I knew it would be controversial. We checked before we decided to put it in. Um, that being said, I, uh, I appreciate all the concerns brought here. I do want to remind people that this is a process. And um, I think that I've shown by my example last year with sick days, we continue to work with the chamber on trying to um, clean up language on that. We continue to work with um, employers, both large and small. Um, and that is the, the hope um, that our office has as this moves forward. Um, I believe there cannot be jobs without employers. I understand that. We are not trying to, to um, inhibit uh, employers from doing their job is all. We just know that as we look at unintended consequences, um, most of them fall on workers, quite frankly. And, and what we have seen in the society is that workers disproportionately, um, especially low and, and middle wage workers, um, are put at a disadvantage um, in, in every aspect of the law. And when it comes to family time, something that I, I hold sacred, um, holidays that I think are extremely important, that if people are ripped from their families and forced to work under threat of being fired, that they should, in fact, get compensation, whether they work at a small business or a big business, whether they work on a farm or in a restaurant or a retail establishment. Um, I, I think that that's an important value, an important value for the state of California and, and for us as Americans, quite frankly. Um, so I, I'd be happy to continue this con conversation, hopefully as this bill moves forward, um, with all of you who have expressed concern, um, but I respectfully ask for your eye vote today. Thank you, Assemblywoman. Uh, I am proud to support and recommend the passage of your, this piece of legislation. Uh, I do uh, believe that uh, it is no secret that uh, it is, you've been recognized as someone that advocates for uh, working families, particularly struggling working families. Uh, so this bill is consistent with that. I also uh, want to point out that in, in our American culture, we do have uh, a socialization that includes um, dominant cultural practices in our, in our communities. And a big part of that is uh, these two holidays. Uh, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Buddhist, whether you're Catholic, Protestant, uh, these are days that are enjoyed by people of all. This is not uh, uh, a religious uh, driven uh, piece of legislation. I think this is a, leg a piece of legislation that uh, understands that as Americans, as Californians, we recognize these days as holidays. And uh, it is a practice in many sectors, private and public, to, to compensate at a greater level for those that are, are being asked or being forced to take these days uh, as work days and uh, a time away from their families. Uh, it is critical that, uh, that we recognize that as a legislature, I believe that we, we work hard to encourage business to thrive and do well, but that's got to be balanced with quality of life in our families. It should not be at a cost of quality of life of California families. It should not be on the backs of shrinking quality of life for families. And when I'm a little disturbed by the fact that uh, I see members of my family, cousins, aunts, now having to spend less time with us when the, the uh, Thanksgiving holiday comes forth, when the Christmas holiday com comes forth, because some of these family members are in retail and they're now, they have added pressures to be away from families. That breaks up family togetherness and that to me is, is important. I think it's important to uh, most members of this legislature who recognize that family ought to come first. So uh, with that, I strongly support and Madam Secretary, please call a vote. Motion is due pass to appropriations. Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, aye. Harper? No. Harper, no. Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Low? Aye. Low, aye. McCarty? Aye. McCarty, aye. Patterson? No. Patterson, no. Thurman? Thank you. Is it out? Okay, the bill is out. That We will hold the roll open for the next five minutes. Uh, we will await uh, for Mr. Thur we'll give uh, the absent members a five minute opportunity to, to uh, arrive. And we will be adjourning in about five minutes. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Senator Member, while Patterson. we're waiting for the add ons, I do need some clarity with respect to uh, how the chair will handle uh, circumstances that I don't, look, we're new, I'm new here. 
Um, it has been uh, the practice of other committees that I have been on that uh, when uh, members hold the floor and uh, in the effort to discover information uh, to inform their decision making, that if necessary, uh, calling others from the audience to clarify and to uh, respond uh, is a uh, courtesy that has been readily um, provided. Uh, I would like to understand if in future circumstances where members would hold the floor and in the course of trying to determine the questions and answers, uh, it, to what degree of latitude do we have as a member of the legislature sitting on the committee to appropriately ask for uh, information and clarity? Do recognize that uh, at the time that we have questions and or the sharing of concerns, thoughts uh, for the author, as a time for that author uh, to ask uh, to be responsive, it has not been recognized an opportunity for uh, debate amongst those that are testifying in support or against. Uh, so I didn't want to open up that. Pendant. I understand. I, I but I was not interested in debate. I was holding the floor and interested in clarity. And I would think that there would be some degree of latitude allowed for members to pursue uh, information and counterpoints for, in order for a member. I, I actually think that a member ought to have uh, uh, the courtesy of inquiry well beyond uh, the support or opposition. It is our job to try to get to an informed decision, and it would seem to me that that, that courtesy while holding the floor to, to examine other points of view would be in keeping with my uh, fiduciary responsibility as a member of the legislature. But I pre appreciate the willingness to have that clarified. Yeah, we'll look at the rules and find ways to create a better opportunity for that to occur more readily. Uh, happy to do that. Uh, but at this time, uh, we are a couple of minutes away from adjournment. Uh, is Mr. Thurman present? Mr. Thurman has added on to all bills, sir. The calendar is clear. Okay, so Mr. Thurman has added on to all bills, and the calendar is clear. So at this time, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.